Hey everyone, it's DM24Fan8 from Viking Gaming Servers. Welcome to episode 2 of the Server Play series. And today, I think I'm going to focus on completely tearing down and rebuilding this mechanism line. Basically, I use it for uh, the auto-crafting of the different mechanism alloys um, from the Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3. And uh, it serves its purpose and thermal expansion item ducts are really really cool and they do a lot of fun stuff but what I don't like about this setup is it takes way too much space up in uh, a room where we need every bit of space we can get so what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to use applied energistics to sub networks instead uh, it'll be a lot more efficient take up a lot less room because we can use colored cables to keep everything separate and at the end, it'll just be a really techy, cool build. So, uh, first of all, we're going to get started on tearing this down. And I will do that off camera real quick and then be right back. Alright, now that we've got that mess cleaned up a little bit, we're back. I've uh, put an ME chest here, isolated from the rest of the network, uh, just using it for power. So that I can get a few things out of my inventory um, while we're working on this build. First thing we need to do is lay down some power because the machines are going to be back to back to back like this and uh, in the interest of saving space so there's going to be one two and three put some covers on there that looks all nice and neat and a lot better now to tie in with the main network we're going to have these purple colored because it's running off the purple line back to the main network um, I'm going to have these cables up here like this, and they'll be hidden by the interfaces, which I should probably actually break these blocks because I'm going to need to make the interfaces directional, and I need to be able to see them for that. So, alright, first course of action is to get the machines and the interfaces, and what we're going to do is a quick one. Oh, I forgot those machines don't stack. <laughs> My bad. We go back, ah, go back and get the rest of them, and put another one, and another one, because they're getting power from underneath, and all we need to do is access the sides and the tops, all of which we can access with this setup here. So it works out pretty well. Um, and now we need to put the interfaces up there. Oh, already have them. Man, I'm just full of derps today. Co-owners mind derpies, and yet I'm the one that's derpy today. <laughs> All right, and basically, there we go. This ensures that the interfaces will only communicate with what's directly below them, which is good because when you put them next to each other, they usually behave. But you're, you know, you might as well be safe and do it this way just in case, um, because there seems to be no absolutes in Minecraft. Things usually behave as expected, but as soon as you assume, that's when they don't. Uh, we can actually put these away. Now, we're going to get the encoded patterns back out of the ME chest. And we'll leave that chest there, even though it's empty, just in case I need it for anything else. Because it's cooler than a vanilla chest, am I right? Put the encoded pattern for enriched alloys. And then, the one for reinforced and refined obsidian dust also gets made in the same machine because they both use uh, diamond dust as their uh, reactant product here or whatever mechanism calls it and this one is for the atomic alloy and the interfaces are all named so that uh, we'll access them from this interface terminal like so uh, the interface terminal is one of my favorite additions in Applied Energistics 2 because it's instead of having to run around and find the interface you want to deal with, you just uh, have one big terminal that has access to all of your interfaces. And it even says that it even tells you what they're connected to and stacks the ones that are connected to the same thing. So, for example, that molecular assembler array in the ceiling out there all counts as one big space, even though it's actually 32 interfaces total and then another five upstairs. Uh, and we've got a lot of auto-craftables. 
as you can see. <laughs> we pride ourselves on automation here at Viking Industries, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, we've got automated crystal growth and even automated uh, magma crucible and fluid transposer setup for some of the conduit filling and tesseract and the like. And uh, alloy smelters and alchemical furnaces. We, we've got a lot going on automation-wise. Pretty cool. And we're going to continue with that trend today. First of all, I'm going to need to request... Oh, I've already got one. I need to request two more of the um, multi-part uh, interfaces. And we can watch it auto-craft. I like how the new stable version of... Uh, Applied Energistics has color coding to show you what's crafting and what's scheduled and makes it easier to keep track of what's going on. There we go. Nice fast auto crafting. Courtesy of Applied Energistics too. And we're just going to put these up here for now. These are what's going to receive items from the interfaces above and uh, they will be then storage bust into the uh, how do I want to put it into the main network again? And uh, actually, I gotta think about the most efficient way to do this, so I'll be back in just a moment. All right, we're back. Just had to dig through the archives a little bit and remember how I uh, did this for the processor line on the last world. I have some bit of experience with. Let's move this out of the way a little bit. How about there? Did that work? All right. Uh, I have some experience with this on the old. Uh, server world. So we're actually going to break these again and because I think what should happen is these should still accept from an export bus on the side. Um, and that's what uh, that's what we want them to do. So let's get ourselves some ME smart cable and we're actually going to go get the color applicator too because we're going to need that to keep these from connecting. How's a color applicator doing for dyes? Pretty good. All right. This is why I make matter balls because they can serve so much dye for the color applicator that you have no idea. Um, instead of one dye per one dye, it's one dye surrounded by eight matter balls gives you eight paint balls. So one dye effectively gives you eight dyes. Works a lot better. So what we're going to want to do, we're going to do these one at a time, um, just to uh, get them painted and not connecting to each other first. What we're going to need here is we're going to need nine storage buses of which we have three. Perfect. Uh, we need six more. And we have all the materials. Good. <coughs> and uh, I, I love how fast our auto crafting goes for things like this. Uh, the processor lines really accelerated pretty well and all of our machines are heavily upgraded so it actually gets through all of this pretty quick. And boom, six more storage buses. All right. Um, so now, what we're going to need to do is storage bus here, here, hello, place. There we go. And uh, here. Now this will be the side that now items will get dumped into this interface and the storage buses will place them on the respective sides of the machine. This will be the output storage bus that will basically be, be used to feed the export bus into the main ME network. Um, this one will output into the purple, which is for the dusts and things, and this will output into the red slot, which is used for the main item, and the blue is the output, which will... Like I said, pull out of there. So it's pretty, uh, pretty cool how this works. And uh, one of the things we're going to want to do is uh, figure out a way to power this. Um, 
I think what I'll probably end up doing is, since I already have some cabling through here, I'll probably just quartz fiber it and run power lines to the uh, system that way. Actually, I'll let's just go ahead and get e get each one of these a uh, cable placed and painted so they don't connect after we uh, do that. So we're going to call this the purple line. This one can be the red line and this one can be the blue line. Perfect. So you can see they don't connect because they're different colors. Uh, unpainted cables will connect to everything, but painted cables will only connect to either unpainted or the same color as them. So it's a nice way to keep them uh, Crap, we need one more quartz fiber. Nice way to keep them uh, separated, but still compact. Whoa. Didn't want that there. All right. Need one more quartz fiber. To request it. It automatically makes three, because that's what the crafting recipe makes. But uh, we, in reality, just need the one. Those are, thankfully, very fast as well. So we'll put that there. And then we'll run just regular uh, regular ME cable. Oh, of course we don't have enough of that. Um, what do we got? Let's just make some more. Request 20 of them. Those should make fairly quick. You just need the glass to make, which is through a heavily accelerated pulverizer. And there we go. So what we'll do here is find where this line... Okay. That's what I thought. Now suddenly, these subnetworks are powered. And as you can see, each one at the moment uses four channels. Uh, however, we are going to need to run export buses up the other side, but that's okay. So we'll cover that side up for now. Also worthy of note is the fact that I do have facades that match these uh, blocks. So we can do something like this to uh, make it at least look a little bit better. And then we're going to eventually run the export buses up here. Yeah, that's what we're going to have to do. And we'll just put a cable anchor up on the main cable to keep it from connecting to that. Now, okay. Um, so let's paint the rest of this line real quick. As we switch colors. Hello, switch colors. There we go. Alright, so this will be the purple line, which is grand. And basically each one of these is a separate ad hoc subnetwork, um, which is neat because it uh, the only channels used on the main network are that of these three interfaces. Uh, these all are independent of the main network and uh, function independently of it. So then we could even put down the cables for the other ones real quick, which we might as well just to get them in there. Um, and as, as you can see here, that's going to mess it up for a minute, but we'll fix that by repainting the cables in just a moment. See, now it's going to think it's using a lot more channels. Um, but as soon as we paint all these red, that problem will go away. Simple as that. Easy peasy. And now that's only using one channel because we haven't storage busted yet. And one more. And now the last line will be the blue line. Okay. 
you, 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 and you. Ah, get back here. And put the storage buses on. And that is a completed setup. Well, not quite. We need uh, export buses. And I don't think I've made those auto craftable yet. Just yet. However, while we're working on that, we're going to get us 12 accelerate. Well, no. No, we aren't. Actually, we only want probably six for now because we're going to need capacity cards too. Which are not auto craftable. However, the basic cards are. So let me get six of those. Because these export buses are going to need to be able to handle multiple uh, export types. And by default, an export bus only gives you one slot for exporting an item. With two capacity cards, you can get that up to nine. <coughs> and. Um, so that provides for expandability of the system a little bit. And I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and finish this part off camera just to uh, keep this from getting too out of hand, and we'll be right back. Alright, we're back. I just wanted to uh, get some of the more tedious crafting and uh, placement and stuff out of the way to semi try to uh, keep this interesting. So what I've done is, uh, we'll make the facades transparent for a minute, each network, each subnetwork now has its own export bus with two acceleration cards and two capacity cards because you see what uh, goes on here. One gives you these many and two gives you the whole thing. Um, and the acceleration cards, well, they accelerate, the, they speed them up basically. So now the system has a way of exporting the finished product back into the main network where it will be used. Now we just have to program it to uh, put the right items in the right slots. So for that, and I have some of each alloy so I can program the whole system um, as well. So we're going to get uh, those all out. As well as a oh, we need diamonds. May have to do something about that. Once we uh, get a diamond dust here and a pulverized obsidian, I will get the rest of the materials out. There we go. All right. One of these. One of these. One of. Oops these and uh, a refine well we'll have to make that in a minute because that's actually required to be made in one of these so first of all what we're going to do here is we're going to say this storage bus is for redstone um, and that's all it uh, focuses on for now that that will make it so that when redstone gets dumped into this interface the subnetwork knows to place it in this storage bus slot which will correspond with the proper slot on the machine uh, these machines, by the way, are fully speed and energy upgrade, upgraded, and uh, so they're fast and energy efficient. We try to be green here at uh, Viking Industries when we can. So this one will be for iron, and then this export bus will export enriched alloys. So now, what should happen, uh, we'll keep those out for a second, because we're going to request one and watch what happens. So it has the materials and they went in the machine appeared to get exported and boom! That's simple. Uh, and a lot quicker than relying on item ducts because with applied energistics the item transfer is instant. With item ducts they have to travel down the duct. Which is cool and I mean it, it provides a, a visually pleasing thing to look at but uh, when you're interested in quick and efficient and compact, this is the better way to go. So next we're going to program this interface, to, or this storage bus to accept diamond dust. And notice we're not uh, programming the top storage bus to do anything. That's because it's just monitoring what's in the output slot, whatever it is. And then the export bus 
exports these items if it sees them in the uh, output slot. And what that allows us to do too is it allows us to do recipes that aren't auto-crafted and uh, have it not pull them back into the system for like one-off tasks and things like that. So put pulverized obsidian there. Actually, I didn't want to put those alloys away right away because we also want that storage bus to uh, be able to input those into that slot. Now, if I'm correct on this, which I ought to be, um, let's check the recipes just to be sure. We can put this away now because it looks kind of weird without the facades. Um, metallurgic infusers. So it is one diamond dust and one enriched alloy. Um, and one diamond dust and one pulverized obsidian. Okay, so we've got that all set up properly. Now we just need to set up that export bus to export the reinforced alloys and the, oh, the reinforced obsidian, which we need to make first. So we'll just manually do that real quick. See how it doesn't get pulled out because that, that export bus doesn't know to pull it. Um, but we will put that in there as another item that it can pull. And from there, it should work out pretty well. Now that we have that dust, we can put it in the last storage bus over here and put reinforced alloys in this storage bus and it should be able to make atomic alloys and pull them out through here. So let's just test the whole system and request, let's say, 10 atomic alloys. Oh, we don't have enough diamonds for that. Right. Let's try, I don't know, four. We've got the materials. We're waiting for diamond dust to uh, craft. It's got to go down some item ducts back into the system from the crusher that it's hooked up to. Now we're making the reef refined obsidian dust. And boom. So it was able to make all three alloys because each one is required in the next tier. And it looks like we've got a functioning system. So that is a great way to save some space and uh, have something that looks pretty cool too. The multicolored cables showing their channels and everything like that. And it's also a lot faster than the setup I had, like I said, because just because of the applied energistics instant transfer. Um, and by the way, the diamond dust comes from right here. This crusher automatically makes it and then we've got osmium compressor and all that uh, going on there. So that will be a completed build, I think. That is how we make mechanism alloys. And that'll be used for the basis of a lot of future things we do, like transporter blocks and things like that. Let's close up the server room. And we'll be right back to wrap up the episode. Alright, so that's a wrap on episode two. I think I'm going to sit here at the cafe and grab a bite to eat. Um, as always, if there are any questions or suggestions of things you'd like to see or have explained, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will be more than happy to respond. And uh, I hope you enjoyed episode two. See you next time.